Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Welcome to today's message from Harvest Chapel International. We believe the message will be a blessing to you as you imbibe God's truth. God bless you. us to be the light of the world. Cause us to be a generation that will show gratitude unto you in all that we do. Lord, we have come unto none else but unto you, Jehovah, the maker of the heavens and the earth. We thank you. I yield this body of clay unto you, Lord, that you will use for your glory. That my speaking not be with man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. In the name of Jesus. Let Jesus alone be glorified. I decrease that I will increase. Exalt your word, Lord. Let your word work a work in our lives. For when you send your word, it will accomplish the purpose for which you send it. This morning, let your desire be accomplished. In the name of Jesus. I bless your name and I give you glory. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. There's a song that is ringing in my spirit. How can I explain Mighty God, I do. You are good than any other God. How can I express a mighty God like you? You, you are bigger than any other God. What a privilege to worship at your throne. You are bigger than any other God. 
Oh, how can I describe? How can I describe? A mighty God like you, you are bigger than any other God. Oh, 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 what a privilege to worship at your throne. You are bigger than any other. So you are. You are bigger than any other God. Oh, you are big. You are greater. You are greater than any other God. You are. speaking to you on what I call seven biblical and compelling reasons why you must thank God. Seven biblical and compelling reasons why you must thank God. So I'm not going to speak to you from my own imagination. I'm going to allow the scriptures to speak to us. That's why I said it is biblical. Biblical but very compelling. Forceful reasons why you must thank God. There are many reasons why we should thank God. But I picked seven. Because seven is a perfect number. Say amen. Seven biblical and compelling reasons why you must thank God. And I believe that you will be blessed. Amen. Thanksgiving is the expression of gratitude to God. When you are grateful to God for the things that He's done for you, the things that He continues to do, you thank somebody for what. A person is done for you. And there are so many things that God does for us. So when we are talking about thanksgiving, we are talking about showing gratitude. The way you thank God may differ. But I'm not into it today. Because I remember last year I spoke to you about various ways of thanking God. And I want to believe that you still remember so you can thank God in various forms. You can use just words to thank God. And some of us will limit our thanksgiving to God 
to only words. You go to God, God, I thank you. God, I thank you for doing this for me. Doing that, doing that, doing that. It's good. It's one of the ways of thanking God. But that's not the complete way of thanking God. You can thank God through offerings. You bring a thanksgiving offering to the Lord. It's an expression of gratitude to God. You can thank God through service. That God has done so much for you. You want to offer yourself to do some work for God. As an act of thanksgiving to God. So it's not only in words. You can sing to God in thanksgiving. But sometimes we limit our thanksgiving to only words and songs. God has heard it and he likes it. That is becoming too monotonous. We should diversify our thanksgiving. Add offerings. Add service. Say amen. You can even thank God by consecrating yourself to the Lord. Because of what God has done for me. I want to thank you with my life. I consecrate my life to you. To the service and to the honor of the king. It's a way of expression thanksgiving. First thing is so common to us. And the first reason is that we must thank God because he is good. We serve a God who is good. Say amen. God shows his goodness in his mercy towards us. His grace towards us. His favor towards us. His forgiveness towards us. God is a good God. And he is not like those that call themselves gods who are wicked. The devil doesn't know what is called forgiveness. The devil doesn't know what is called mercy. The devil doesn't know what is called favor. If God, if the devil shows you some kind of favor, you will pay a dear price for it. A serious price for it. So we thank God because he is good. His goodness passes our understanding. How God so loved us. How God so showed us mercy. He extends his goodness to both the righteous and the unrighteous. And every day you go to sleep and you rise up because you know another day is coming. You never think that oh, the next day will not come. You've taken it for granted that the day will appear. But God is working behind the scenes and showing his goodness by providing you with air to breathe, food to eat, water to drink. If air was a commodity that human beings were producing, every one of us would be carrying a meter by our nose because we will pay for it. You pay for it. The water that God has provided, that human beings have added a little value to it. You see how you pay for it. That God gives to us freely. It rains upon us. God gives us food to eat. The Lord is good. And the reason why, the first reason why we must thank Him is for His goodness. The Lord is good. Psalm 24 verse 1. And run with me very, very, very fast. Because I want to finish this. Then quickly. Psalm 24 verse 1 says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell in. The earth is the Lord. This earth that you are in is not yours. Somebody has given it to you. It is for God. The earth is the Lord and the fullness. The fullness means your house belongs to the Lord. Your car belongs to the Lord. Your TV that you cherish so much is the Lord's. You are just a caretaker. He's provided it for you. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And the fullness thereof. There was a time that the friends of Job tried to question what God could do. And God asked them the question, when I was laying the foundations of the earth, where were you? 
when I was laying the foundations of the earth, where were you? So there are foundations of this earth that the scientists can't see. They say the earth is hanging. Because your eyes can't see. But there's a foundation that God laid to keep this earth. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The earth is the Lord. And that's the reason why we must thank God. We must thank God. Psalm 107, verse 1. Quickly. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Mercy prevents judgment from coming your way. Because if God was to deal with us without mercy, none of us will stand before God. But his mercy holds back his judgment. It holds back the anger of God. God expresses mercy to us. Compassion to us. And I live because of his mercies. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. So when mercy goes out, you become a target to be consumed. You will not just be destroyed. You will be consumed. Say amen. And that is the reason why every day when you rise up, you must thank God. Somebody died. He died and went to heaven. The experience of some people I read about it. Somebody died, went to heaven. He came back. He resurrected, came back. And he told the story. That when he went to heaven, he saw the angels. Some of them were busy. Busy going up and down. Busy. So he asked the angels. The angel who was accompanying him asked him, who are these angels who are so busy? I see them busy going up and down. He says, these are the angels that are carrying the prayers of the saints. Aya, aya, aya. An angel is carrying it to the presence of the Lord. Then you saw a category of angels who were sitting idle. And for a very long time, they were sitting idle. It would take a very long time before one will rise up and then walk away and then come back but the rest were all idols so he asked the angel who was accompanying that who are these category of angels who seem not to have any work to do he says these are the angels who are supposed to carry the thanksgiving of the sons of men to god but there's no thanksgiving coming and so they are idle have no work to do they are just there we must learn the act of thanking God for his mercies, for his goodness. The, dog, the Lord is good. You cannot say that today the Lord hasn't been good to you. You've been able to move your leg. You breathe. You are strong, you are alive. Some people have died, but you are alive today. And that is a cause for you to express the goodness of the Lord, to thank him. For his goodness. Say amen. The, song, the songwriter says, Praise the Lord because the Lord he is good and his mercy endures forever. Day by day, every day, God renews his mercy. The mercy that is carrying you today is not the mercy that carried you yesterday, it's a renewed mercy. Day by day, he renews his mercy. And the psalmist says, great is thy faithfulness. We serve a faithful God. That's why you've got to give him thanks every day. The Lord is faithful. The Lord is faithful. I can testify of the faithfulness of God. He is a faithful God. Say amen. amen. Number two, the second reason why we should thank God is that Thanksgiving grants us entrance into his presence. You cannot enter the presence of God without thanksgiving. The thing that opens 
opens the door for you to come before the great king is thanksgiving you know today as we are here some people have come to church there's a category of people who have come to church but there's a category of people who have come into his presence that is, there are two different categories of people here there are some who have come to church and there are some who have come into his presence those who have come to church are so worried about the dress that they have to put on the shoe they have to wear and that is all that occupied them so before coming to church from yesterday you have thought about the thing you wear and the hairstyle you will make to come to church but you have not called upon God you just walked in that is what consumed your heart some have come to church because they want to come and meet with their friend and that is all that occupied you come to church but be among the category that will come into his presence when they come with an open heart with thanksgiving in your heart the Bible says enter his gaze with thanksgiving and to his cause with pray Psalm 100 we gain entrance into the presence of God so every day if you have to go into the presence of the Lord you must learn the act of thanking God entering into the presence of the Lord doesn't de depend on where you are you can be in a taxi and you'll be in the presence you can be in the washroom and you'll be in the presence you can be in your bedroom and you'll be in the presence it's an act of opening up and expressing gratitude to God that opens you opens the door for you to enter into the presence of this great king say amen, amen. God God is, is a wonderful God he's a great God he's a mighty God he's the Alpha and he's the Alpha Omega <laughs> you know I, 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 I is the Alpha Omega that's the right word he's not the Alpha, Alpha and Omega he's the Alpha Omega there's no space of time with God he's today and there's no tomorrow in God he's today God is now Say amen. amen. So you when you are coming, you, you must learn the act of entering the presence of God every day of your life. Because that was the reason why you were created. That you will stand in his presence and make him happy. Make God happy. You are not in, in life just to make your family happy, make your spouse happy, make your children happy. Those are secondary things. The primary reason why you are in life is to make God happy. For his pleasure we are and were created. That's what the Bible says. All things were, his, were for his pleasure, but they are and were created. So every day learn the act of entering the presence of this great king but a good thing is that jesus has made a way for us that we can go boldly into that throne room of grace and we enter that throne room or into his presence with thanksgiving in our hearts let's learn the act of thanking god expressing gratitude to god every day every day you should not go through a day without thanking god you should not you should not you grieve god by not doing that if you do something for your friend or you do something for somebody and the person refuses to thank you you know how you feel and sometimes for us because of that act you will never speak with the person again you get offended and there are many sitting here who have been offended like that before 
But today, learn from the King of Kings, who daily renews his mercies. In spite of all that we do, don't show gratitude to him. But God is still merciful. But today, the second compelling reason why we should thank God is that I want to gain entrance into his presence. And I need thanksgiving as a key. Say amen. amen. The third reason why we should, should give thanks to God, the third compelling biblical reason why we should give thanks to God is that giving thanks is a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. So the Holy Ghost will help you to give thanks to God. It's a good thing. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power that he went about doing good, doing good, doing good. One of the good things that you can do is to give thanks to the Lord. It's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. When we say that something is a good thing, when the scriptures say that something is a good thing, it means that it has the endorsement of heaven. When you do it, you open up blessings when you do it. When the thing is good in the sight of God, it opens the door of blessing into your life. And thanksgiving is one of such. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. Psalm 92, verse 1. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name. Oh, most high. It is a good thing. It is a good thing. It is a good thing. you refuse to give thanks, you are not doing a good thing. It's a good thing. It's something that heaven endorses. It's something that heaven approves of. It's something that opens the door of blessing. It's something that causes God to come into your situation. Learning the act of giving thanks. That's why I tell the direct saving to food that because you are thanking God, God will remember you. I do not forget your thanksgiving. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. And thanksgiving was practiced by the apostles, practiced by the prophets, and practiced by Jesus. And the scripture says that we are built upon the foundations of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. So we are built on a certain foundation. And the foundation that we are built on is that the apostles, the foundation that was laid by the apostles, is one, one of the foundations that were laid was the foundation of thanksgiving. And Paul says that I thank God always. When I remember you, I thank God. I thank God. Jesus stood. When he was going to feed the 5,000 people, they brought him the loaves of bread and fishes. He looked at it and he lifted and he thanked God. He said, Father, I thank you. It's a foundation that has been laid for us. They practiced it, they walked in it, they lived it. See, amen. And there's no other foundation that we can lay than that which has been laid. You cannot live as a Christian without thanking God. Letting your life be a life full of thanksgiving. They practiced thanksgiving. You can put down, because of time, I'm saving time, Matthew 15, 35 to 36. You can put down Luke chapter 10 verse 21. You can put down Ephesians chapter 1 verse 16. You can put down 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 11. But let's look at Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 20. Hebrews 13, 20. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, no? make you perfect in every good work. 
to do his will working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight make you perfect in every good work thanking God is a good work and Paul praying it is believed some people believe that the, 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 the book of Hebrews was written by Apollos some believe that it was Paul the, the author of Hebrews is, is there's a controversy about it but whoever wrote it under the inspiration of the spirit of God said that he is praying that God will make you perfect in every good work God will strengthen you in every good work and my prayer for you this morning is that God will strengthen you to live a life of thanksgiving because it's a good thing working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight Thanksgiving is something that pleases God. I pray that it will be your portion. It will be your lifestyle. You will learn how to thank God. Say amen. amen. The fourth compelling reason, biblical reason why we should thank God is that thanksgiving or thanking God is a mark of obedience. Is a mark of obedience because we are commanded by scripture to thank God and when you refuse to thank God you are disobeying scripture so when you flow with thanksgiving you are flowing with scripture you are working in obedience to the work of God those that do not thank God are working outside scripture because scripture endorses and obliges us to thank God continuously. Say amen. amen. Colossians chapter 3 verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Verse 17. And whatsoever whatsoever you do in word or deed do all in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks whatsoever you do in word or in deed do all in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks so your deeds must give thanks to God your words must give thanks to the Lord. Say amen. It's a command. So when you don't do it, your, 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 your thanksgiving is just words, but not deeds. You are disobeying scripture. You are moving out of scripture. Whatever you do in word or in deed, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Giving thanks. Giving thanks. So on a, on a meant like this, a meant like this, which is a meant where we are expressing the, the, the blessings of thanksgiving. It should be possible that when we want to even announce the thanks offering, we should announce it, announce it, and announce it. But all we know is that, oh, I thank you, Lord. God has heard your thank you, Lord, too much. Thank God indeed in your actions, in the way you act, not just words. Giving thanks to God and the Father by Jesus. Whatever you do, in word or in deed, in word or in deed, in word or in deed, giving thanks, giving thanks giving thanks say amen. amen second corinthians chapter 2 verse 13 second corinthians chapter 2 verse 13 i had no rest in my spirit because i found not titus my brother but taking my leave of them, I went from thence to Macedonia. Now 
thanks be unto God which always causes us to triumph in Christ and make manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. Now thanks be to God which always causes us to triumph. Thanks be to God. Every victory that you chalk, you must thank God for it. Every victory. Every victory. And it should not just be words. God has helped you to buy a car. Thank Him. God has given you a job. Thank Him. God has helped you to build a house. Thank Him. God has helped you to marry. Thank Him. God has given you children. Thank Him. Who causes? It is God who is working behind the scenes to cause you to triumph in everything that you do. So express your thanks to him. Say amen. Thanks be to God who always, not sometimes, always causes us to triumph. So we thank God as a mark of obedience to God. God expects us to thank him. And uh, the scriptures instruct us to thank him. So much in the script in the in the Psalms, the Bible says that oh give thanks unto the Lord for his good. Oh give thanks. Oh give it's a command. Give thanks. Give thanks. So when you are thanking God, you are obeying scripture. Say amen. The fifth compelling reason why you should thank God is that when you are you thank God. You are walking in his way. It is the will of God that you thank you. It is the will of God that you thank you. So you cannot be thanking God and be outside the will of God. You are thanking God for the right thing. You will always be in the will of God. In the book of 1 Thessalonians verse 5. Chapter 5, verse 6, verse 18. 1 Thessalonians 1, 5, 18. In everything, underline the word in everything. The scriptures did not say for everything. It said in everything. And I need to explain that. It's not for everything. Give thanks. So, <laughs> So you don't thank God for an accident. But if you find yourself in an accident, you thank God. In everything, not for everything. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. It is the will of God. It is the will of God. Oftentimes we, we argue, how can I know the will of God? How can I know? One of the ways to know the will of God or to walk in the will of God is to give thanks. For this is the will of God that in everything give thanks. Everywhere that you find yourself in, every situation give thanks. In that situation, like Paul and Silas did when they were locked up in prison kept down the dungeon in thick darkness at midnight the bible says they praise god they thank god in that situation in that situation in everything so it's not only in good times when you are in situations when the billows are rolling because god did not promise you that you will not walk through the water or walk through the fire but he says that when you are walking through the water and walking through the fire, I will be with you. So in that situation, thank God because he's with you. Thank God because he understands what you are going through. Thank God because he has not left you. Say amen. In that situation. So when, when some bad thing happened to somebody, so thank God, you just thank God. No, no, not for that. Not for that. 
not for that. I will not thank God because you are poor. But if you find yourself in poverty, thank God because God, and the more you thank God, the prison gates will fall. And Paul and Silas thank God in that situation. It broke the prison gates. So one of the ways when you find yourself in an uncomfortable situation, thank God in that situation, a generous power that loses the, the grip of the enemy over your life in that situation. In everything, give thanks. For this is the way of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Say amen. Say amen. The sixth compelling reason why you should thank God is that God values and appreciates our thanksgiving. God values and appreciates our thanksgiving. God values and appreciates our thanksgiving. Luke chapter 17. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off because of the uh, Mosaic laws. When you are a leper, you don't come in the midst of people. And they lifted up their voices. The reason why they lifted up their voices was that they were standing afar off. So you can't whisper. You have to shout to attract the attention of Jesus. Because they were standing afar off. So they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. Go show yourselves unto the priest. Because when you are cleansed, the first place you go under the Mosaic law is to go and show yourself to the priest so that you be incorporated into society. The moment you are a leper, you are put outside the gate. You are put, there's always a city gate, a city wall. And you are put outside the gate. That's why Elisha, that when, when, when he prophesied that tomorrow by this time, some great things will happen. And the, the one that bare the cup of, of the king, disputed it. But he said, you, you will see that you will not taste of it. The Bible says that at that same moment, there were lepers who were outside the gate. So when you are a leper, you are put outside the gate. So, and when you are cleansed, the first place you go is to go and see the priest. And the priest will testify that you are cleansed before you are brought back into society. So Jesus told them, go show yourself because you are cleansed already. Go show yourself to the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. As they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back with a loud voice, glorified God, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him what? Thanks. Giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. He was a Samaritan. Verse 18. to 17 again and Jesus answering said where were there not ten cleansed but where are the nine there are not found that return to give glory to God save this stranger and he said unto him arise go thy way thy faith hath made thee whole Jesus was disappointed in the nine because they did not return to give thanks that tells you that God values thanksgiving he appreciates thanksgiving so the reason why we must go to God with thanks 
for all his benefits. All his the psalmist said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. There are benefits that every day God brings into your life. And the fact that some benefits hits your life every day tells you that God thinks about you every day. That God is gracious to you. And for that reason, you've got to return to God and to give Him thanks. Don't be like the nine that forgot to give thanks. And the more you thank God, the more you open yourself to the wholeness of God. God makes you whole. He doesn't only heal you, heal your situation, but He makes you whole. And so God appreciates and values thanksgiving. And that's the reason why we must come before Him with thanksgiving. Second Chronicles chapter 5 and verse 11, 13. Second Chronicles chapter 5, verse 13. It came to even to pass. As the trumpeters and the singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord and when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord saying for he is good for his mercy endureth forever that then the house was filled with a cloud even the house of the Lord. This was when they were dedicating the temple. They came to God thanking for his goodness. They made, they, they, they sang to thank God. They blew the trumpets. And all that they did together as one, God responded. God acknowledged what they are doing. That the temple was filled with the cloud of the Lord. It was a response from heaven telling you, telling them that God appreciates and endorses the thanksgiving that they were bringing to him. So God values thanksgiving. He appreciates thanksgiving. And that's the reason why we must learn to thank him every day of our life. Say amen. The seventh reason why we must thank God is that thanksgiving enriches your prayer it enriches your prayer it enriches you when you have to go before God and it's all God do it for me do it for me do it for me do it for me without expressing gratitude your prayer lacks something your prayer is not rich we must enrich our prayer with thanksgiving it makes your prayer precious in the sight of God when you mix it with thanksgiving when you express gratitude for all that he has done for you so you don't go to God only God do it God do it a songwriter said that is God a dog a d-o-g or, or g-o-g in the same words the same alphabet but you can turn it God but you can turn it D-O-G becomes a dog so for us sometimes God is like a dog to us God do this for me God do that God do that you know how we if you have dogs in your house and then the dog will run and go and search the things for you then he direct the door. So God has become like a D-O-G. That's what the Sam Ratara wrote. Is he a D-O-G or a G-O-D to you? Is he a God or a dog to you? But God becomes a God to you when you learn the act of thanking him for all that. Because he's doing so much for you. I said the things that God does for us our eyes see just about a tenth of it a lot of it we don't see with our eyes the battles that are being fought on our behalf the things that are being done in the realm of the spirit 
that God is doing for us, that his eyes are constantly upon you, that his hands are delivering you, bringing you some deliverance that you are not aware of. If God told you that that journey you made, you should have died during that journey, but I intervened, you will not believe it because you do not see an angel intervening. But in the, in the secret place, in the spirit realm, God was working for you. And that's why when we are praying, then the act, thank God for the things your eyes can see, your, your hands can touch, that is done for you. And thank Him for the things that you cannot even see. The great things that you stand for you that you can't see. You slept and woke up this morning. When you woke up, you were okay. But you don't know the battles that went on. Sometimes some of the battles God will open your eyes small. Then you see a huge man standing there and fighting you. That small thing, you wake up and your heart is beating. That's why God doesn't show it to you. Because when he shows it to you, something will happen to you. If you are not careful, you have BP. So God won't show it to you. He will do the battle for you silently. But let's mix our prayer with thanksgiving. Philippians 4, very common scripture. Philippians 4, 5. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Yes, me. Are you watching me? Be careful for nothing. But in everything, in everything, in everything everything means everything in everything by prayer and supplication not only prayer and supplication but mixed with thanksgiving mixed with thanksgiving that makes your prayer smell good in the nostrils of god it makes your prayer become whole when you pray without thanksgiving, that prayer is not whole, it's not complete. So Paul is teaching us under the inspiration of the Spirit. But in prayer, we pray, we supplicate, then we are thanksgiving. When you do that, by doing that, your request is made known unto God. So when you don't add thanksgiving, your request will not be made known unto God because it lacks something. They lack something. The angels of God, what they do is that they refine and purify our prayers before it gets to God. Nothing unholy gets to God. So there are some prayers we pray they never get to God because when the angels have to refine it, nothing is left. You are praying for something and the reason why you are praying for that thing is that because you are jealous that Kwame has it. So you must also have it. So the prayer is loaded with jealousy. The angels will refine it. And when they refine it and take the jealousy out, there is no substance in the prayer. Some of the prayers are loaded with envy. When the angels refine it, there is nothing left. Nothing goes to God again. Because it's empty. It, the angels should take out the jealousy part. Take out the envy Take out the pride. Take out the self. Take out the wildness. Even in our prayer. In our prayer is just nothing. In the sight of God. That's why you are praying. Ah, you have not seen answer. Because it's not getting to God. Because nothing unholy gets to God. Are you hearing me? Nothing unholy. The Bible says with prayer. Supplication. With thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. And when your request is made known unto God, the peace of God will keep your heart and mind. You have prayed, uh, yet you are still not getting your peace. Check the prayer. Because if the prayer is complete and perfect, the peace of God will keep your heart and mind. So the certain reason why we should thank God is that it makes our prayer complete and acceptable in the sight of God. And so every day of our life, 
we must learn the act of showing gratitude to this God who has been so good. So good to us. There was a king Jehoshaphat when he was going to war against three kings. They didn't know what to do. And the Lord stepped in and said, this battle is mine. Just set the singers before me and let them sing of my praise and I will do the battle for you. And Jehovah said the the, the, the Hosaphat set the singers ahead and as they moved into battle can you imagine people going to fight an army and there were all musicians in the front it looked crazy but as they moved and they sang because he's good and his man sees and you is because, because he is good, he is good. And, his and his mercy is our and end it is because it's because he is good he is good and his mercy is our and yes because, because, because listening to the message visit us on www.harvestinternationalministries.org send us an email through office at harvestinternationalministries.org or call us on 0302-222-372 or 0302-229-109 god bless you